Hi everybody and welcome to Travel in Russell and welcome to new video and welcome to Moscow. Now today I've got a really interesting video for you. Something very different from what I do on the channel. But I thought I'd come to this winter sporting event and I can get a little bit closer. Have a look, I've got the high-vis vest on, which means I'm part of the media here and I can get some nice, interesting footage for you. So let's go check out what's going on. How beautiful does it look? Now, if you're wondering where I am, this is actually a place called Sears Car Navy Swimming Club. And we're going to go inside the building in a little while and check that out. But just have a look how beautiful it is. This is Saturday morning that I'm here. And it's so beautiful and so quiet right now. Wait till we see the swimming. It gets a little bit louder and a little bit more exciting. We're actually here at Himki Reservoir. And normally in summertime, or at least not in winter, this is a marina and boat dock and where people would come out and boat, water ski, all sorts of things. And of course today, none of that's going on. It's the Russian Winter Swimming Championships. And actually off in the distance, there's some guys here ice fishing. What would you do on a winter's day in Moscow? Of course, go ice fishing. Have a look at these boats right here. How amazing are these? <laughs> They're completely snowed over. Just for a little bit of context of where I am, I'm actually standing on a boat dock here in Moscow. And this is actually a reservoir and it's dammed off. And any time of the year, this would be water right here. There'd be boats, water skiing, all sorts of different events and there's even somebody walking their dog walking right across the middle of the water right now obviously it's winter here in russia so this is completely frozen over there's also some people out there ice fishing as well there's a hovercraft and what we've come to see is the russian winter swimming championships and there's actually a 25 meter pool right in front of me. The event is actually held over three days. This is day two of the event. It's the Russian Winter Swimming Championships. And this is the Moscow leg of this. And exactly as I'm doing this little piece, there's a race going on right now. And there's judges here. There's timing. Uh, yeah, cables that are attached and out they come out of the water here and these are really athletes. I've actually never been to this part of Moscow before and uh, I want to come back here in summer and see how it really looks as well as right now in winter and there is races going on all day from 10 a.m. this morning until 4 p.m. this afternoon and they're just ongoing so there's a lot of different categories different age groups there's kids through to the oldest I believe is about 80 and it's just a beautiful part of Moscow and then you put in ice swimming as well and it just adds to the intrigue of Russia as a country. Before we walk inside and have a look at the building and the grounds and the swimmers, I just wanna thank Maria for inviting me here today. She's actually a YouTube channel subscriber. She's also a channel member on Telegram, Traveling with Russell channel. And she said, come to check this out. I think you'll be interested and you might wanna make a video. And her actual mum is swimming in this event today. We're going to see some of the swimmers as well. So thanks Maria for inviting me. Hope you had a good day. Had a good laugh with me. And I think it's been fun so far and the rest of the day will be as well. If you want a good example of 1970s, 80s Russian architecture, have a look at the public swimming pool right here. It's a little bit hard to see behind the trees, but 
all those concrete lines and that brutalist architecture that's so well known throughout all of Russia. This is actually the public swimming pool here where you can just pay admission and go swimming. And then where we're gonna check out in the video is the swimming club, which is a separate building just behind me. If you might be into any kind of sport and perhaps football, I think CSK is probably the most recognized and famous Russian football team, especially domestically here in Russia. And this is actually one of the clubs that they have. They actually have some different sporting groups that are actually based here at this particular building. And maybe you know CSK, let me know in the comments. There is actually quite a rivalry amongst different Moscow-based clubs here as well, with Dynamo, Lokomotiv, and perhaps you know this team. Now I promise you I will show you some swimming, but inside of the club here, they've actually got an indoor rowing center, and this is where they train. I feel like I'm sharing the secrets of Russian sport here by showing you this and have a look at this pool that they've built that's essentially a training facility for rowing and I thought it was a swimming pool when I walked around the corner but check this out this is really Russia I've come to the upstairs part of the building and they've also got basketball in here and have a look at the wooden boards and just how many people possibly use this over the years. And the thing that gets me, you know, when I come into this kind of place, you know, it just makes me feel like, you know, Russia 30, 40 years ago. But in winter in Russia, you need these indoor facilities. And you can see outside, you know, just how wide it is and how snowy it is. And then you come in here and it's actually heated. It's really nice and warm. And you know, you can train in here. They do volleyball, basketball. They even do five-a-side football. And then today, everybody that you see gathered around are all basically preparing to go for a swim on that uh, estuary outside or reservoir. So this is kind of the uh, preparation area for the swimming. I just noticed on the wall here some photographs of sailboats and they sail these here in summertime. And CS Car has a training facility here for sailors, particularly young sailors. And I'm pretty sure that some of these different classes are actually in the Olympics as well. So this is a year round sports club. I think pretty safely CSK dominate a lot of sports in Russia, particularly inter-club sports. Uh, a lot of the bigger clubs in all the bigger cities in Russia, you know, really have a big membership. And check out some of these trophies that they've got from over the years. If you've ever been involved in sporting events or maybe you've volunteered or you come as family members, you know there's a lot of sitting around and waiting around and pretty much with the way the weather is and the way the sport is designed, there's a lot of waiting indoors and with jackets on and big coats before they get called out to the actual pool to swim. Along with the swimming event that I've come to, I hope this is a very interesting behind the scenes look at Russian sport and sports clubs and to see some of the other events that are going on here uh, at the same time as the swimming championships and just to see that rowing center downstairs that was really cool for me I really like that Russian Soviet you know kind of look to things not everything has to be modern and beautiful you know that old design that's just, you know, works forever. It's just what makes Russia, Russia. I thought we'd start off by coming to the public viewing area. And there's a little bit of a roped off area here, if you like. 
where they suggest not getting too much closer because you might step through the ice and into the water and then have a look out there the swimming pool and there's actually events going on throughout the day uh, from 10 a.m. this morning until late this afternoon just check out the view and have a look around there is just white everywhere and this would actually be water I'm literally standing on the edge of the dock right here and those boats that we saw a little bit earlier literally snowed in and then off in the distance we can see the pool in total for the event today there's 160 athletes that are swimming in all age categories from children through to adults and beyond and a lot of the people that are right here are friends and family and there's different clubs represented as well from all over russia from as far east as vladivostok and also ufa kazan sochi murmansk all over russia and wow it's just standing here staring out at that water you know it makes you feel cold now of course having this orange vest on gives me a little bit more access to the event gets allows me to get a little bit closer as we head on through the trees here and we can get right down to the water and get up a little bit closer to the athletes and the swimmers after leaving the main sports stadium and sports club the swimmers and athletes come on over here to the banya house and this is a sauna or steam room depending on how you translate what a banya is how beautiful is it by the way imagine in the evening with the lights on and what happens is the swimmers are marshaled from the initial point where we were in the gym and they come over to the banya house and the idea is to stay as warm as possible for as long as possible before they go out and jump in the water. I just thought I'd mention and uh, give you a little bit of caution. Uh, there is people with not a lot of clothes on in this part of the video. And really it's just swimming costumes and swimsuits. But you know, if you might wanna close your eyes or close one eye and have one eye open, unfortunately you might see some people a little bit undressed, but part of the whole culture of this winter swimming championships you know you've got to jump in the water and swim right well, let's head on in the banya and get on down to the pool the number one rule of a russian banya always close the door behind you number one rule now of course we're not going to walk around the banya because you've got russian guys like this who want to show off the bodies and these are the real men of russia they go swim in that water then they come back in here and warm up and then they do it again and then come on through here to the other marshalling area and you'll see everybody with their jackets on and coats on and dressing gowns and different things and then you get the odd person just ready to go jump in the water let's walk on through and get down to the pool so what happens is once the judge and the officials are ready for the swimmers to hold their event, they come on down and then head towards the pool. The whole point of it is, is they spend the least amount of time exposed to the weather and to the cold. And you'll see them of course wearing these big heavy jackets and the previous race just came out now as we head down there and there's different age groups and categories running all day. And what happens is the head judge, an official, uh, he marshals the swimmers and then prepares them for going in the water, giving them the least amount of exposure time. So literally he tells them undress, get in the water, and then essentially the start gun goes off. And off they go. And this is actually a breaststroke and they're doing 50 meters and the pool is actually 25 meters but they're going to do down and back again 
And in this particular category, there's two races, but they have up to four in uh, each event as they're holding them throughout the day. And they're coming on back. And there's even timing. And there's a scoreboard, there's a commentator. And it's quite a big deal, really. Coming out to the pool edge, the only rule I was essentially given is don't <laughs> fall in the river. And it literally is a man-made pool with a surrounding. And as the weather's getting a little bit warmer, it's starting to melt a little bit. There's also a kind of pool forming over here. And that was the only essential safety rule I was given. Also, don't get in the way of the swimmers, of course, but that's without saying. Have a look at the view. One of the races has just finished. These guys are doing the 50 meter breaststroke. Basically, 25 meters up, 25 meters back. And the race is complete. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's been nice. And they're off. So as fast as the previous race finished, the next swimmers are in the water. And the head judge here follows them up and back to make sure everything is all okay. They do actually have safety divers here as well, literally kitted up. If anything happens, they'll literally jump in and bring the swimmer out. And that's why they've got a airboat. Is that what they're called? These boats back here. And they can take them literally right to the uh, their safety station and take them off to hospital or whatever they'd need to do in an emergency. But these guys have been out here all day. I forgot what the name of that boat's called. If someone could tell me in the comments Airboat, fan boat, and it's even over 50 meters. There's a gap in the finishing distances. I mean, is it really about winning or is it about competing? I think, you know, that's the thing that's hard to uh, grasp with this sport. If you're curious of the uh, water temperature, it's saying right there it's four Celsius is the temperature of the water. So about 40 Fahrenheit. The actual outside air temperature today is about minus six and it feels like minus 10. I think it's probably about right. And then again, the swimmers come out and back and then all the officials and judges right here and then off in the distance all the family members so i really do have a question for everybody could you do this i mean i think you know there's a good amount of the population in the world that can swim i that i understand but could you get in the water and swim in four degree water here in winter in moscow let me know the commentator is calling out the swimmers' names and where they're from. And there is one guy from Vladivostok. He came 8,000 kilometers across Russia to come and compete in the Winter Swimming Championships. That's just amazing that they're traveling so far across Russia for this event and to take the spoils of winning or to compete you know that's the real sport I, 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 I'm lost for words a little bit when I'm here watching them because when I heard about this last week and someone told me I was just in awe of them doing this and then when you come down here and stand here it's a whole different thing The swimmers in this event are teenagers and it doesn't really matter, young and old, they're all getting involved. <laughs> it's really, uh, yeah, make sure that they don't slip over. They put salt there, they put their shoes correctly for them and here they come back from the last event there. Wow. Very close, no way, no way. It 
So one of the events I wanted to cover was my friend Maria's mum and her event. And hopefully I can get down there. They just came past me right now. And there's a bit of a crowd for them as well. I think they're quite well known in the winter swimming circles. So let me get a bit closer. So she's swimming in lane two with the black cap on and off she goes and this is Maria her daughter actually she was volunteering for most of the day today and she's come down to see her race and I think looking at how far she's got ahead in that first 25 meters she's pretty good and I know that she competes in other parts of Russia. She also swims internationally as well, which is just so interesting. And this is actually 100 meter race. So it's four laps or four times up and down. And the crowds have built up. It's probably the most amount of people that were here today. Uh, to watch this race, I think it's maybe one of the blue ribbon events of this racing uh, day today. Now it's actually held over three days, but I was told specifically, come on Saturday, come and see all the best swimmers race. And here she comes. She has essentially lapped the competition. And I think Maria is very happy. <laughs> so what did you think of seeing Maria's mum swim? She really lapped the field. I didn't realize, you know, how much of a champion swimmer she was and how uh, far ahead she was of some of the other swimmers there. I mean, my real question is after you're watching this, could you get in that water and go for a swim? Really and truly, could you? Brave the Russian <laughs> cold water. And even just the outside temperature, it's got a little bit colder now in the last few hours. It's probably now about minus 10, the real feel. So let me know in the comments, could you jump in that water and do 25 meters, at least in one direction, uh, let alone doing four laps and 100 meters like Maria's mum did. Now, I think if you've watched my channel for long enough, you know I'm a man of the people. And I thought I'd come up and just filmed the last bit of the video up here in the grandstands or in the cheap seats, if that's what you want to call them. And I just noticed on the back of this lady's uh, jacket here, she's got a walrus on the pitcher. And they call the Russian winter swimmers walruses for the appropriate reason. Pretty much only walruses want to swim in this weather. And I think everybody that's standing here in the crowd, I reckon, I think they'd rather stand here than go jump in that water and have a swim. What do you think? As it gets a little bit darker here in Moscow and by the reservoir, the last event is over. And now all the people are actually inside and debriefing and warming up and having some nice hot soup and tea. I really hope this was an enjoyable video and you found it interesting and different. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, maybe bigger than the normal thumbs up on the videos. Uh, I did ask a few questions throughout the video. Perhaps you want to comment on it. Would you want to swim in that swimming pool right there? Essentially, it's a reservoir, but would you jump in there like you saw throughout the video, the different age groups swimming right through to Maria's mum at the end there. I don't think I could. All day people have been trying to convince me to get in that water and have a swim and I don't know if my body could take it. So thank you so much everybody for coming traveling with Russell today here at the CS Car uh, Sports Club in the northwest of Moscow by the way. It's not anywhere close to where I live. I've got about a two and a half hour journey home 
no worries. A few trains, a few buses, and I'll be back home myself. If you want to follow me on Telegram, there's a link right here. You can check out my Telegram channel, Traveling with Russell channel. If you'd like to watch an older video on the channel, one will come up right now. Perhaps you want to see something a little bit older, maybe something you've not seen before, or if you're new to the channel, keep watching. Thanks everybody. I'm off on another adventure. Bye.